What's up guys, this is Kefis, here to showcase another macro from my Gnome Sequencer plugin. And today we're going to take a look at Unholy Death Knights. Now keep in mind, once again, this is not a full-on Unholy Death Knight guide, but rather a demonstration of how my macro works so that you can understand how to use them and hopefully have help you have a better experience in the game if you need something like this for help. So Unholy Death Knights is something I'm excited about because I didn't originally have this included in the plugin in my list because I hadn't thought it was possible to macro this class and spec but when I found out that they were so popular I wanted to try it out and I messed around with it for a full day I mean this was like one day of work and I got something together that I'm pretty happy with it took a lot of a lot of trial and error a lot of testing and I'm pretty happy with the results so if you haven't downloaded the latest uh, download from the Dropbox folder um, Basically, like, I'm not a mod writer. There aren't version 1, version 2, or whatever. I don't have all, like, change logs. It, I'm just kind of doing this off the seat of my pants. So, uh, when I uh, uploaded the Prop Paladin video from yesterday, I included the Unholy Death Knight in that one. So, if you haven't downloaded a Gnome Sequencer download lately uh, from my plugin, uh, you can download it from the Dropbox. A link will be that to that in the description below. Just replace the old Kefis Macros folder with a new one and you'll be ready to go with the Unholy Death Knights. Um, a good way to check to make sure you haven't downloaded it is just type in slash GS and Unholy Spec and if you don't get any macros you will know that you need to download the latest version. So that's a good way to know. So uh, having said that you'll notice that there are two macros for Unholy Death Knight. You've got Unholy SS which is the macro with Scourge Strike and then you got Unholy FS, which is the macro with Festering Strike, and then it recommends talents. Um, we'll get into how these macros work here in a second. Let's go over talents real quick. I'll let you know which ones are more or less mandatory to get the most out of the macro. The main one is Eben Fever, because it reduces the, the time that uh, the plague is up on the target from 21 seconds to 10.5 seconds. So when you use Outbreak, you put a plague on the target for 10.5 seconds with this talent. If you don't take this one, uh, you're going to cast Outbreak a little bit more often than you need to. That's basically what's going to happen. So I was really hoping that All Out or All Will Serve would be more uh, more effective compared to these other talents, but according to Icy Veins and others, it's not because basically this lets you have two ghouls up instead of one, which is really cool. But it is what it is. If you do select one of these other ones, just remember you're just going to ca out cast Outbreak a little bit more often than you need to. Um, Clawing Shadows is another one that I recommend. You don't have to take it. It's just going to replace Scourge Strike. If you don't take it, the macro will use Scourge Strike. If you do take it, the macro will use Calling Shadows. It doesn't really matter. The other kind of mandatory one, it's not really mandatory, but I definitely recommend the rotation that I'm using is based around the Soul Reaper rotation, not the Dark Arbiter ro ro uh, rotation. The reason being is because with the use of these macros that are going to be using Death Coil as often as they can, you're not really going to be pulling up Runic Power like you should to use Dark Arbiter. Uh, even though Dark Arbiter is well received, like, people love it with the Legendary Ring especially, um, it just doesn't work very well with these macros because you should pull up, um, you know, Runic Power, hit Dark Arbiter, spam Death Coil and all that kind of stuff. So that's just something to think about. This one will be a little bit easier to manage with the macro. Soul Reaper is included in one of the macros and I'll explain how that works here in just a second. But make sure, basically make sure that you mainly have Eben Fever and Soul Reaper. Otherwise, you can basically choose whichever one you want. Clawing Shadows is definitely one I recommend as well. Um, but you know, you, people will ask, you know, sometimes I'll have abilities in the macros that I don't recommend the talents for. That's fine. It, that's just so that if you do decide to go with those talents, the macro will cast those abilities for you in, in those situations. So that's just keep that in mind as well. So basically you've got two macros, Festering Strike and Scourge Strike. They're both basically the same thing with a couple of variations, but they're going to have, one's going to have obviously Festering Strike, the other one's going to have Scourge Strike. The reason being is because it's impossible to put those in one macro. Not only because they both consume runes, but because you should only use one or the other given the right set of circumstances. Basically, to sum it up, this class requires a little bit of dot watching, dot tracking. I'm using weak ores to do that, and you'll see my weak ores when I start doing combat. Basically, you use Festering Strike to generate two to four Festering Wounds on the target, which is a debuff that stacks. Whenever you use Scourge Strike, it consumes one rune, and it, cons and it consumes one Festering Strike. So, you never want to use Scourge Strike unless you have at least one stack of Festering Wounds on the target. You don't want to use Festering Strike and overcap your Festering Wounds. 
Basically, if you have four or less stacks of Festering Wounds, you can cast Festering Strike. If you have five or more, you want to definitely stop casting Festering Strike, because what could happen, let's say you have five Festering Wounds, and then you hit Festering Strike, and it would normally generate four more Festering Wounds, you'd be overcapping, because you can't have nine Festering Wounds, you can only, cap, you can only have eight. With that in mind, it was easy to make the macro. So basically, what you'll do is you'll hit Festering Wounds to get enough stacks of or you'll hit Festering Strike, excuse me, to get enough stacks of Festering Wounds, and then you'll hit the Scourge Strike macro to consume those Festering Wounds and uh, and get that stack back down, and switch back to the other one to build Festering Wounds back up. And if you have like a macro like Weak Horrors to keep track of those, or maybe Tell Me When or something, it's really hard for me to keep track of uh, debuffs, regardless of what I'm doing. Because the reason why is because when I'm, whenever I'm doing it, whether I'm looking at the debuff above my nameplate, enemy's nameplate, above the target's uh, plate, or I'm using something like Weak Horrors and it's putting up a little picture on the screen somewhere, it doesn't matter how I'm doing it, I'm having to put a lot of my attention on that portion of the screen, and that makes it really hard. So these macros really come in handy because it allows me to focus on fewer things. Because if I had to worry about Death Coil on the separate button, Dark Transformation, I'm have to pay attention to all these other cooldowns, I have to pay attention to my Runic Power. If I can kind of simulate those while I'm worrying about Festering Strike and Scourge Strike, it makes it a little bit easier. So Soul Reaper, if you've taken that talent, is going to be used whenever you have, whenever you start using the Scourge Strike macro. I thought it worked better with that one because you're going to be spamming that one a lot more and uh, Soul Reaper has a 45 second cooldown. That way you can make sure that you're hitting that whenever it's on cooldown. Now Outbreak is the other trick. This is the other thing that you need to juggle because Outbreak, it consumes one room and it puts that plague I can't pronounce this. Is it virul virulent? Virulent? Whatever. It puts that plague on the target for 10 seconds, 10.5 seconds, if you chose an even fever. If not, it put it on there for 21 seconds. And basically, with 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 the shorter uh, cooldown or uh, duration, it makes it easier to macro, but it's still a pain in the neck to deal with in macros. Uh, I thought about just having outbreak on a separate button and managing it separately, uh, but what I found to be a little bit easier was including it in one of the macros. The way to do it, because there are no like there are no abilities in this entire rotation, unfortunately, that last for like 10 seconds or close to 10 seconds. The closest thing I found was epi epidemic, but that has recharges. So if you use this, what's going to happen, especially in the beginning, is you're going to use outbreak and then epidemic, outbreak, epidemic, outbreak, ep epidemic, and your DPS is going to suck and it's not going to work. And plus, you should never use this unless you're doing AOE, anyways. So that wasn't a good way to go. The only way I could do it was to create a line in the macro called cast sequence reset equals target slash five, which means that it will reset when you switch to a different target or when you haven't pressed the macro for five seconds. And then it says outbreak comma null. What that does is it'll cast outbreak once and then it won't cast anything else and it'll just start worrying about the other lines in the macro. That way, it will cast Outbreak, and then whenever you switch target, it'll go back, reset, allow you to cast Outbreak again. Or if you don't touch the macro for 5 seconds, it will reset the Outbreak line, and you can cast Outbreak again. The way that it's going to work is I've put that line in the Festering Strike macro. So when you begin the encounter, and you start hitting the Festering Strike macro to build stacks, it will also... Be, be, while it's maintaining your your death coil whenever you have enough runic power and your dark transformation cooldown and your and your gargoyle summon and all that kind of stuff it will also uh, use outbreak and then it'll stop using it until you switch to a different target or you stop using it for five seconds now you will stop using it for five seconds once you've generated enough stacks of scourge strike or I mean of festering wounds to use scourge strike so during the time that you're spamming scourge strike to consume those festering wounds that outbreak will reset and by the time you you go back to generate more festering wounds with the festering strike macro the outbreak will have reset and you'll be ready to hit that again and put that disease back up on the target. That's basically how it works. Now, if, you, if that's still a little confusing for you, allow me to demonstrate. The first cool thing about this macro, too, is that when you, you have a ghoul that fights with you at all time called, called like Raise Dead, whenever you don't have the ghoul up, you hit the button, it will summon the ghoul for you. Now you're ready to fight. So you've got your ghoul ready to go, you go up and you start hitting it. Now we want to generate Festering Wounds on the target. So there we've got Outbreak up already using the Festering Wounds macro. We've got two stacks, we want to get more. Five is, is enough. So we'll start consuming the Festering Wounds with the Scourge Strike macro. You're seeing it's also transformed our, our ghoul, it's summoned our gargoyle. We're down to two, we've definitely, uh, we're using up the death coils 
and we're down to zero. Now we're ready to get Outbreak back up there just in time, and we want to continue to spam that macro to get more Festering Wounds up. We've got two. We need a few more Festering Wounds before we stop. Let's do it again. Now our four is good enough, so we'll start consuming those. By the time we consume these four uh, Festering Wounds, Outbreak will be ready to be recast again, and it will have reset. One, two, uh, there we go. It's good enough. So we're down to, f we're, we're down to one. We've reset um, Outbreak. We can do it one more time. All right, we have seven. Now we're going to consume those seven Festering Wounds. And again, by the time we get down to at least under four Festering Wounds, we'll be ready to reset Outbreak again. So what we'll do is we'll switch back to it. Okay, Outbreak is gone, so we better switch back now. So we'll switch back. We've got five Festering Wounds, and now we've got Outbreak back up again. So again, we'll switch back to Scourge Strike and do that one again. And basically, that's kind of the rhythm to get this to work with these macros. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but it was the best that I could come up with. Okay, we're going to let that sit for a minute. We're going to go ahead and we're going to reset that again. Even though it was a little bit quick, it's fine. And then we're going to get these. We need more Festering Wounds than two for sure. So you definitely want to make sure that you have at least five before you stop casting the Festering Strike macro, which is fine because by the time that Outbreak is ready to be used again, you should be well under five. Maybe even all of your Festering Wounds will be used up. And you'll see that it's also using the Soul Reaper ability whenever it's available. So we've got four. We might as well keep hitting it until we get more. Look at that. We have a full eight stack. We don't want to hit Festering Wounds anymore. And by the time we get that eight down to at least four, we'll be ready to put Outbreak back up on the target. And we'll switch back to the Festering Wounds macro. So we're good. Get one more, one or two more off there. You'll make, you will make. definitely notice it's also worrying, uh, taking care of Death Coil for us, keeping our Runic Power down. Okay, we've got three. Uh, won't, be, won't hurt us to keep hitting Festering Strike to make sure that we get over five at least. Okay, now we've got six, so we want to switch over. And as you can see, that's doing pretty good. I mean, DPS is staying relatively high. I'm not doing it perfectly right now because I'm talking, and it does require a little bit of focus for me because I have to keep track of this weak aura stuff. You'll see here I've got a weak aura set up. Basically, the, the green blinking arc right now, it's blinking whenever it's over five stacks of Festering Wounds. And there's also a number there that you'll see ticking down. That's letting me know how many stacks of Festering Wounds I have. The bar that's going down slowly is the outbreak bar for the virulent plague that it, it puts on the target so that way i can keep track of all these important buffs in one spot and i'll know which button to hit based on what's going on there so i definitely want to make sure that i'm below f at least four stacks of festering wounds before i switch back to that but i also want to make sure i switch back in time to allow that outbreak to be recast but i also don't want to hit it too much because if i keep just hitting festering strike uh, with that macro, then I won't allow that Outbreak to reset, and it will never cast Outbreak again. So as you can see now, I'm switching over to Scourge Strike to make sure that I'm consuming these Festering uh, Wounds. And by the time we get down, as you can see, and that's basically the rhythm. I know, like I said, it's a little bit complicated. It might take you a minute to get used to how it works, but once you do, you'll find out that it's actually doing pretty good. Now you see right there, right, it's a good example of when I overcast. But like I said, it's not. I'm not perfect at it takes a little bit of practice so it's 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 a little complicated some of you might argue that it's a little bit overly complicated but you know like I said it's the purpose of it is to make it so I don't have to worry about hitting buttons it's just a class it's the way the class is designed um, but I'm pretty happy with this macro it's a pretty fun little play style that I've kind of accidentally stumbled upon here with this class and I enjoy it pretty well so it's doing like I said I'm pretty happy with how much damage it's doing compared to what I was doing in frost it's way more so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, like I said, it's a really popular spec, and that's basically how you play in a Holy Death Knight with my macros. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll try to answer those questions for you. Don't forget to download link to the latest version of my macro plugin for Gnome Seekers or Enhance will also be in the description below. So if you download that, you'll get the Unholy Death Knight macros included. Just replace the Kepis uh, macros folder with the new one and you'll be set. So again, don't forget to like and, f and share this video with friends that might be able to, if this helps them out. I hope this helps you out. Always appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the uh, support for these, you guys. Again, as always, it's been great. I'm glad these are helping people. I'm glad it's going over pretty well. So thank you guys for watching. I will continue to work on these. I will continue to try to improve them the best I can. And whenever there's an update, I will, of course, let you know in a video. I'll have these in a playlist in chronological order, so that way you'll know 
like when the latest. But I mean, all download links will have the latest versions, anyways. But regardless, you'll understand like the progress that I've gone through in showcasing these. And if there are any, the latest news will always be in the latest videos. So, and of course, after I get done with all the showcase videos, if I have any major changes and I update the gnome signature enhance, I'll let you know in a video and let you know what I changed. So again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. This is Kefis. Until next time.